you know, I let go of running uh, fast a long time ago. My my relationship with running now is is fantastic. Um, I look at it in in a lot of different uh, aspects. I mean, for some days it's therapy, um, and some days it's just like some days it's a grind because I I might not feel that great. This episode of the Smart Athlete Podcast is brought to you by Solpre. If you're active at all, whether you're running or simply out walking for the day, you've probably experienced one of the number one problems that active people have, and that's chafing. Solpre's all new, all natural anti-chafe balm solves that problem while feeding your skin the vital nutrients it needs to be healthy. If you'd like to stop chafing once and for all and treat your body right, Go to Solpri.com to check out the anti-chafe bomb today. And that's S-O-L-P-R-I.com. Welcome to the Smart Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Funk. My guest today is a former pro runner. During his time doing that, he qualified for two world championships. Previous to that, he was a division runner at Tennessee with a former guest, Eric Bell, back on episode 92. So, you might want to check that out as well as, you know, maybe we'll give Eric a hard time as we get going. He has his master's in education, comma, leadership. Um, he's also the head coach for the Knoxville Distance Project. Welcome to the show, Patrick Gilday. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate it. It's good to be here with you on this Friday, this lovely, beautiful Friday. We're starting to steam up here in uh, East Tennessee. Yeah, it's been... Uh... It's been raining here pretty much nonstop for the last week, and we were hoping for some break coming up in the next week, and then the forecast comes out. No, another week of rain, and just <laughs> it's it's to me. I mean, we're on the tail end of it now, but I'm like, well, it's finally like track season weather. It's been like unseasonably cold, so the only thing I'm missing is you know we got all the rain, so you get the rain smell. It's 60s to maybe low 70s. All I need is to be at the track and get that actual like track surface smell when it's wet. And then I'll be like, <laughs> it'll all start coming back to me. You know, there, there are those smells like there's the, like you said, the spring track smell and then there's like the fall cross country. Yes. Smell of the, you know, the, the, the freshly cut grass. And I saw yesterday on the news that there's, you know, they already have the hurricanes named. And so, um, I can't quite recall what they all were, but um, yeah, I, I, it's been unseasonably cool. It's been incredibly welcomed just because like normally at this time, it's like super hot and super humid, but now we're here and I just keep telling the athletes that I coach, like dig your heels in because you know, this is going to be probably this way until October. And so, um, but you know, it, winter seems like such a long time ago and uh, with everything we've dealt with over the last, you know, 12 to 14 months, I'll take a little bit of heat and humidity and, and, and deal with it as best as we can. Yeah. Do you, you know, when you're out running now, do you get flashbacks when you smell certain things? Is it like, I know for a long time, and it seems like it's worn off for me a little bit, but in the fall, thinking about cross country, there's that cross country smell. And to me, it's like, it's, it's a little bit cut grass. It's a little bit decaying leaves, you know, woody type areas, like that kind of thing. And it's, you know, immediately after college for a couple of years, definitely was like, this is cross country season. And I'm, you know, 10 years post-college now. And I feel like it's worn off a little bit, but I still get bits and pieces here and there. I smell it and I'm like, nope, that's here. Like here it is, it's track season. It's what, it's whatever it is. I don't think indoor season has a smell to me unless it's maybe like musty, moldy gym or something, but. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, I'm, um, I'm 20 years removed from, from, you know, uh, being a college athlete. Uh, occasionally I get those, um, you know, flashbacks, uh, you know, about if I'm running down the greenway or something here in town or, and I don't really work out anymore. Uh, I run every day, but uh, nothing quite like what I used to do. And so, but occasionally I'll, I'll have, you know, something will 
jar my memory and I'll remember, you know, work at, that I might have done with Eric Bell or, um, you know, uh, you know, who, or, or whatever it was. And I do get, there's like certain, uh, you know, smells and, and feelings that you get. I, you know, indoors, I would think, um, you know, having grew up in New York and then moved down to Knoxville in 2001 to go to UT and, um, it, the indoor smell is like mineral lice, you know, like that, uh, you know, whatever you want to call that. Um, I think there's been like Bengay and mineral ice and all sorts of different, um, mm -hmm. you know, ointments that you put on. And so, yeah, yeah, you know, cross country is like the newly cut grass for me. I think of indoor track. Um, not only is it a circus, but I, I, I remember that smell. And then outdoor track, like you said, you know, it's like, uh, you know, that when the track is, you know, damp from a, you know, from, a, you know, the rainfall and, uh, you know, not, I, you know, I coached, used to coach high school, you know, high school uh, track and field and cross country. And so I miss that aspect to it. Um, but I still definitely get those, um, the, yeah, those little uh, flashbacks on occasion, like, oh, this is what, it, like, this is what it was like around the state meet or whatever, you know whether it was a state meet in cross country, indoors or outdoors. Um, so yeah, I missed that aspect to it, but those little scents and, and sometimes it's a sound that might um, jar my memory. It's, to me, it's almost like, like the only other thing that I have like an olfactory memory, like a smell memory about is my grandmother's house. And, uh, her house smells like cigarettes and home interior candles, but that sounds like, like a great combination. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So that's, that's the only other thing that's like, if I smell it, I'm like grandma's house and she doesn't use the home interior candles anymore. So grandma, if you're watching, stop with the, the like glade plug-in spritzy things, go back to the candles. It doesn't smell like your house anymore, <laughs> but it just, you know, there's, there, I don't feel like there's any other thing that's so consistent growing up. You know, because it's four years now to either of us is much faster than like four years high school or four years of college. It feels like such a long period of time and those consistent smells year after year after year in the same conditions to really like cement it in your head. I just, besides, you know, going to grandma's house or something like that, I just, I can't think of anything else that's so consistent like that to, to stick that kind of olfactory memory in my brain. I love it personally. I, I think it's fantastic because it, you know, it, it does like, sometimes I do forget. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting older. And so I love when I, you know, head out for a run and, and, and there's a smell or a, a sound that, um, you know, just makes me think of something from a long time ago. And um, I, I, I like it, you know, it, it sometimes, it can it can do one of two things on a run if i'm by myself it, or with if i'm with a group of friends it might make me slow down and try to like appreciate a little bit more or it might make me you know speed up my tempo and think like oh yeah it was 15 years ago or 20 years ago that i was really training you know or really you know really out there doing it and um if i'm by myself it, it only affects me if i'm with my group of buddies and it, then it impacts them and and sometimes they might not be too happy about it but uh but it i i get a kick out of it you know it's a it's a real hoot and so yeah it's neat i don't know that you can get that from you know swimmers probably get it you know when they go into the natatorium and and they smell the chlorine and it's like you know it reminds them of that and you know tennis players probably get it when they hit the court and basketball players get it when they you know, pick up a basketball, Ho hockey is, you know, in full bloom at the moment, no pun intended, but they get it probably when they hit the ice, you know, and so it's, it's a neat, it's a neat component to all athletics. Yeah, it, I mean, last week I was speaking to um, Jason Fitzgerald, who's the founder of Strength Running, he's built a really big kind of running community, he's, a, he's kind of basically in between our ages, actually, and uh, between that and then it, you had sent an article from uh, uh, there was an interview with you back in 2006 
and you're getting ready for, I think your world, first world championships and reading about like training with a team and just, so between my interview with him, reading that, getting ready to talk to you, I like felt a little bit kind of reminded of that, like, I'll call it running magic, like that, that excited feeling you get when it's like, you're thinking about the next season, you're thinking about being with your teammates and like just the anticipation of the possibilities that the season could hold and like that getting excited for that next race and the excitement in the race and just all those little moments that I feel like I've been missing for such a long time since I've, you know, once you're post-college, many of us don't really have a, a team anymore. It's becomes a much more individual sport. And uh, I feel like I haven't felt like that for a long time. So it's kind of been nice to kind of go back for maybe a, a short week and feel some of that again. Um, you know, you just, this is rest week for me. So it's just easy runs, but um, it was nice to feel at least motivated and, and kind of inspired thinking backwards. So I, I'm kind of curious um, for you being, you know, a little farther on than I am to, like so how, you're calling me old you're no, calling me old not calling you old i definitely had older guests on my on the show <laughs> i'm not the oldest guest that's good okay fantastic no definitely not um <laughs> not even close um i I'm would say looking than max pocket though i'll say that <laughs> i have to call it max so i'm gonna call him out yeah it's see i don't remember i can't remember what episode number max is so i have to look that up real quick but um I just was curious, like how your relationship with running has changed over time. Cause I mean, we all deal with the inevitable fact that like, we can't be as fast as we were forever. So for reference, Max is back on episode 71, another friend of Patrick's who's on the show. So I'm, I'm collecting apparently your group of friends. <laughs> um, it's like, like trading cards I gotta, or Pokemon. I got to collect them all. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm curious how, how your relationship with running has changed. Cause you know, you were it, it, at the peak of your running and I don't know exactly where you got, but definitely at least mid 28, you'll have to tell me where you got 10 K wise, which is I, to me, certainly. And I think m many people probably listening a very enviable, um, kind of time, even if you're not, you know, setting any world records, uh, many yeah. people can only dream of you know, running that. So um, obviously that doesn't last forever. So, you know, how, how do you relate to running now? Is it, is it hard to let go of, you know, wanting to be that fast? You know, how, how has that relationship with running changed over time? Well, well, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, Jesse. I, you know, I let go of running, uh, fast a long time ago my my relationship with running now is is fantastic um i look at it in in a lot of different uh aspects i mean for some days it's therapy um and some days it's just like some days it's a grind because i, I might not feel that great and other days it's just like hanging with the guys or the group that i'm with um, and I, obviously I see it as just like a form of, you know, it's my form of exercise. Like people, um, I'm, I'm approaching next year will be eight years since I've not missed a single run in, in eight years. And so, um, and I've run give or take 10 miles every day for what will be January 27th, 2022 will be eight years. Um, but it's my form of exercise. And so people go to the gym and people get on an elliptic on an elliptical or a bike. I don't have the time, nor do I want to make the time to like invest in buying a bike and spending four hours of my, you know, on any given day out riding a bike. I have no problem. I, I respect the heck out of people that do that. For me, running is, um, it's 75 minutes out of my day. And I, I, I'm someone that is, whether I'm disciplined or stupid, I get up every day and do it like clockwork over and over and over again. 
Um, and I have a really good relationship with it because I don't, it doesn't, the only, I don't let it affect um, any other part of my life. And so um, I don't, I never run in the middle of the day. I'm a five o'clock in the morning runner. And so if a friend calls me up or there's something else that I have planned in the afternoon or the evening, my run is already done. So I've, I've had that moment with my run and it's over and I log it because I'm old school, because I am old. I like hand write my logs. I have, you know, whatever, 25 years of running logs that occasionally like I'll look back on if I'm, you know, not necessarily if I need like inspiration, but if I just sometimes again, like that old factory sense, like if there's something that like something in the air that I needed to remind myself of, like I'll look back and if I needed, if I need to reference it for like a particular athlete that I coach, but um, yeah, my, my relationship is, is, is really good with it. And um, you know, I don't get too excited about things. I'm pretty, I think even keel and uh, very, very plain, I think, um, or mundane or however you want to describe it. Um, but it, uh, to me, it is just like something I do. And so, you know, other people have their own habits and, and, and for me, you know, there's, there's no question. It doesn't matter, um, what the circumstances are, what the weather is like, or what, things might be happening like I go for a run every day and so it's my time you know sometimes I run with music sometimes I don't sometimes I'm with friends other times they're not there um but I get my running all the time and 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 I enjoy it you know it's um it's you know I don't know how much longer I'll be able to do it every single day but I'll probably do it for as long as I can. You know, I mean, I wake, I wake up and, you know, my knees hurt and, and everything is tight and sore, but I've had knock on wood, like no surgeries or no real like major injuries. And um, so I, I, I enjoy everything about running. I, I like watching it. I like reading about it. I like speculating about things and, and I like what it does for me. And I, I, and I also, you know, with the individuals that I coach, the athletes that I coach, like, you know, I, I like what it provides them, you know? And so, yeah, I love running. It's, it, 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 it's got me to this point talking to you and it's, it got me to UT uh, and it, you know, took me to a lot of nice events like around the world and, and, and it, and, it, and it's been a fascinating trip so far. I think I'm probably just a blip in your, the grand story of your running life, but this um, could be as I, good as it gets right here for me. <laughs> well, you know? I, I appreciate the mention, um, but there's something nice about getting that run done in the morning. Like I, I usually um, have a habit of I'll get up and you know eat breakfast and then go work out whatever it is I'm doing for the day I, I have one day I swim one day I bike and then another four days I run um but I always try to get done in the morning because it's like the day the day at least for me wears on you and just you know things can come up the, the later on you go in the day the easier it is for something to come up get in the way you got to go do this thing and then now you didn't do you know, in your case, the run or whatever the workout is. And then you feel bad because you didn't do it and you feel bad because you're guilty because you didn't do it. <laughs> so it's like this compounding effect. So something so nice about just like knocking it out of the way right in the morning. And then not only is it out of the way, but you can already check, like I accomplished something for the day with, if the rest right. of the day goes to shit, I got this done. Like, <laughs> Yeah, something was something was accomplished. I got something out of the day. I, I yeah, I agree. I, you know, uh, we may we may or may not get there at some point. But the Grateful Dead have a song called "Hell in a Bucket." And after I've run in the morning, then the rest of the day could go to hell in a bucket. I could eat pizza, 
or not, or I could do whatever I want to do, because as long as I've accomplished that one thing, and as long as I've done my job, you know, to the best of my ability and take, you know, taking care of the athletes that I, that I coach and, you know, take manage my nine to five pretty well, then, then I've done all the things I need to do every day. And so, mm-hmm. um, I, jo- I, I make bad jokes all the time. And I say that people that don't wake up and run in the morning, they're just lazy. And I know that's not true because people have different schedules and some people, you know, I'm a morning person. The alarm goes off at 4:15. I don't necessarily hop out of bed, but I get up and and I and I get going just because I know that uh, throughout the rest of the day it's going to make me feel better. You know, I might get I might drag around, you know, three three o'clock or four o'clock, but I know that at least I don't have to go home and run because I already did that today, and I can go home and like, you know, sit on the couch, watch running stuff or whatever it might be. Um, but that's just my thing. And, and, um, I'm not throwing shade on anybody that doesn't wake up and at four 15 and run at five, uh, because I run through campus sometimes and I see the swimmers out and it, they're, they seemingly are com- going back to their dorm from their swim. So, you know, I think like they're kind of crazy in the sense, like what, if I woke up at this time, what time did y'all wake up to like, wake up, walk to the pool like practice and then you're walking home already like the 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 cafeteria isn't even open up yet and so um but yeah swimming is for everything i've learned about um especially collegiate swimming but swimming at a high level is just hours and hours and hours and tour days and just grinding like crazy and and i mean to be a good distance runner like you have to be a little bit of a glutton for punishment so to speak but the swimming seems like another level and it's so much time just to you know like in the interview that uh, I was reading with you from back in 2006 talking about trying to improve your 10k time and you could do about 25 seconds faster a year it's like that that's that's something to chew on you know like 25 seconds is something to chew on you go to the pool it's like no, we're talking about like tenths or hundredths of a second. Yeah, <laughs> and you got to put all this time in just to just this little fractional. It, it it feels more disheartening to me, uh, but I also didn't grow up a swimmer, so maybe that's simply the difference. But there's something nice about going. Oh, I knocked you know knocked a half a minute off my PR. Or I knocked a minute off in the last such and such time. Whatever it is. There's just something more nice and, and tangible about that than, you know, I'll, I, I got three hundredths of a second faster and that's all I needed yeah. to call high. Yeah. I, you know, I'm glad that, you know, in, in running that we, you know, get to deal in bigger chunks because yeah, I did, you know, a long time ago, I ran 28, 38, 72 um, in I don't know, 2006 or something like that at the mm-hmm. Mount Sac relays. Prior to that, my PR was 29.09 uh, when I was a senior at UT. Um, and then so that was 2003. So yeah, 2005 or six, somewhere there, I uh, went out to a, uh, Mount Sac, ran a, ran a you know, pretty big PR and, um, and thought, so it would have been, it would have been 2005 because 2006 would have been the Olympic trials. And so um, th- then the following year I thought, well, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, I'm ready to go. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna run 28 minutes and, or, you know, 28 or five or something like that. And so, um, uh, you know, started training a little bit more and pushing it a little bit more and, um, went out to, uh, the Stanford meet and the same one I had gone to, whatever three years prior as a senior in college with with eric and a bunch of other guys and thought oh, I'm, I'm ready to run 2805 you know i'm going to qualify for olympic trials and and i went out in 1410 at the time i i've never broken 14 minutes i i, I ran 14 what did i run 1402 seven or something like that uh at pen relays i was a distant uh third or fourth the winning time was alan webb ran like 1335 with like two other 
two other guys with him and I was basically just running by myself. And um, so I went out in 1410 and ended up running uh, 2920. And so it didn't work out. It didn't go very well for me. Um, and then the next year I ran 29, 4, 2845. So I got kind of got back to that point. Um, but then the qualifying time for the trials was 28:40, and so I missed it by five seconds. And um, there was a lot of things that happened in between. Then, you know, I ran different races, and um, you know, was still training and putting in the work, and uh, running with the, you know, my college coach George Watts was still at, at here at UT. And um, but then it just, you know, it it it, it just kind of came to an end, and and um, you know but all my experiences from it were fantastic. And, um, you know, not too many people can say that they ran like a cross country race in Japan. And I did, um, you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't, you know, wish for more, uh, you know, um, because it, it, that, that, that's what it was. And, and, you know, so I look, I, I don't look back on it really that often. Uh, and thankfully the, the, the athletes I coach don't ask me those questions and uh, you know, they could care less as long as their workout is. And, and I don't mean this, you know, that they're selfish. They just, they want to know that what the workout is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't ask me like, well, what did you do? You know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago or 10 years ago. They just want to know that the workout that they have is, you know, appropriate for where they are and what they have coming up on their calendar um, so it's kind of a nice thing that, you know, the only time I might think of it is like in my, between my own two ears, I don't, I try, it, it, there's no point in like, you know, rehashing, you know, what I did that long ago, because in the grand scheme of things, and Jesse, you know, this like, yeah, it might've been, it was decent, but you know, now it's like, if you run 28, 38, you're not, you're not even going to make it into the A section of a, mm. of a 10,000. And so, um, but it's still nice, you know, it's nice to be able, I, I wish I would have been able to break 14 minutes just so I could say like, I, you know, ran under 29 minutes and 14 minutes. Cause I broke, I broke 64 minutes for a half marathon. Um, and I won't even go into the marathon talk just because that was a total train wreck. <laughs> um, but you know, to, it would have been nice to check the box for four, sub 14. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't happen. It was, I was close twice and twice I came up short. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's the good and bad thing about running, right? Where it's like the clock is what the clock is. Like it's not, there's no, you know, if, say we're playing, like we're playing soccer or football or whatever. It's like, well, you know, if this person had just move forward a little bit more and just barely had been there then all oh, the shot would have been it's like there's none of that it's just yeah this was the, this is what the time was i mean you can look back and say uh maybe this type of lap or that lap but it's like you, you make adjustments as you can and, and during the race you have your game plan you try to execute the game plan as best you can but it, sometimes it just it doesn't go off and that's just just it is what yeah. it is like that, that there's no it's the both the beauty and the brutality of the sport is that there is no hiding there's no my oh my teammate no. didn't do it it's it's <laughs> i didn't do it. it's all on me it's it's i didn't do it and that's i think that's tough especially when you get close you know for me it was you know, I'm much slower. So getting under 16 was the big mark for me. And I've, I've done it three times in my life. Um, I'd like to get back there in the next year or two, but we'll, we'll see um, as my legs are waning, obviously I'm early thirties, but it's, there's just some of those, you know, marks where like, it's a personal satisfaction, you know, cause like I said, I, I can sit here with you and I'm like, Heck, I wish I was like sub not 29. Like that's that's light years away from you know anything I would have ever ran. But it doesn't matter. Like the way I view, say, going sub 33 is the same way you would view 
going that like low 20 it's it's, it's the same yeah. mentality it's For just sure. a, a physicality difference of you know this is in part just genetic potential of what each body can achieve um one thing i like to ask about especially for people like yourself who have run at a high level, continue to run, you know, post-college and delayed that, you know, student athlete to no longer athlete transition. How did that transition go for you when it was like, okay, it's over. Was it, was it easy to put it away or, or do you still have nagging? Do you, do you remember? Uh, you know, I think it was pretty easy. Uh, you know, um, I never, I remember showing up to the track one day. Um, and I think, you know, my coach at the time, George Watts, I had a workout planned and, or he had a workout planned and I showed up and I said, yeah, I'm not going to do the workout today. I think I'm done. And he's like, what do you mean? You think you need a couple of days off? And I said, no, I think I'm just going to be done, you know? Um, so it was, and, and then, and then that, base then it was finished and so um and i didn't immediately put myself like all into like a like coaching um i never really thought that i was going to be a coach or, or wanted to coach um it just kind of it just kind of happened um frankly i just because one i just didn't think i'd be any good at it um just because my personality my attitude i was just like i don't think i'm going to be really good at like telling other people what to do uh half the time i don't even listen to my own self let alone like you know instruct other people like this is what you should do and so but then fast forward you know i've got a grad position at uh, at St. Francis University in Pennsylvania and, um, you know, got, you know, was a GA for two years, you know, while I got my master's degree and, you know, coaching at the division one level. And, and I didn't do a whole lot of coaching, you know, as a GA, you're just kind of, you know, you're doing a whole lot of just, you know, plain work, if you will. And, right. but then when I moved back here, you know, I, I came, of course I came back to Knoxville and, um, Coach Watts was like, you know, he, he was in between things and he's like, well, you need to come help me out at this high school gig. And I'm like, I'm not coaching high school athletes. It ain't happening. And again, fast forward, that lasted almost 10 years coaching at the high school level. Um, and I, yeah, at first I was like, I, I'd call him up pr pretty much every season be like, I'm done coaching these high school kids. This is ridiculous. Like I'm not cut out for this. I'm not doing a good job. And he was like, Nope, you got to keep doing it. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll keep doing it. Okay. And so I kept doing it and, and, you know, we had some, you know, pretty good success and, and, you know, some kids, not everybody goes on to run, you know, uh, you know, at in college athletics and, um, but, you know, you had a couple of state champions and team, a team, you know, team title. And, uh, and then, you know, something, something called and was like, it's time to get out of, uh, you know, high school coaching and started, you know, you know, morphing into, you know, coaching adults. And, uh, you know, I've coached, you know, an individual that qualified for the marathon trials, you know, last February and, um, a lot of the folks I coach now are, you know, they're, they're, they're out doing w what I do every day. Like they're running every day. And so mm -hmm. they're trying to be the best version of, of their own self. And, um, and it's a different, like, you know, the thing I say, or I've said before, you know, it's like, I, I like wearing like a, a, a variety of hats because it's like, you know, I've coached at the college level, I've coached you know, at the high school level, you know, for, uh, during the 20 leading up to the 2016 Olympic track trials, I was with Ben Rosario and the NAZ elite group. And so like, that was something completely different, uh, you know, working with, you know, some of the highest level athletes that, um, you know, were trying to make the Olympic team. Um, 
and I don't, I don't view it as like coming down to work with, you know, folks that are not at that level. It's, it's the same, it's a similar mindset. Like, you know, the workouts are pretty similar, you know, they're, they're obviously not running at, you know, the same pace and effort and speed, but everybody does the same workouts and, and, and the same approach or a similar approach you know, to the person that's making the Olympic team for the person that's trying to like PR on a Saturday morning 5k, uh, there's not much difference. And so, um, I think all those experiences, you know, as a student athlete at UT and then as a professional athlete, you know, whatever the things that I've accomplished. And then as a college coach, high school coach, and then as a, you know, however you want to categorize what it is that I do now with the Knoxville Distance Project, um, uh, you know, I'm able to pull from all those, um, all those things, and and for some for some people it works, and obviously it, it's a it, it, we improvise every day, and so you know sometimes we need to change workouts and do different things and. Um, but yeah, it, it's it like I said, like I said before, it's been a it's been a neat trip, and and I wouldn't I wouldn't change it or you know trade it in for for anything else. And so, like I said, it's got me to this point here now, and and I you know I like where I'm at at the moment. So yeah, I like being here with you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Um, you, you said you know while well, kind of giving the the backstory to the last. Uh, I'll call it 20 years, but um, exact time frame obviously is going to vary. But thinking about the, the time of the high school, you said, you know, you were basically like, like, no way, not doing it. And then your coach is like, well, you're going to do it. And you're like, okay, so I, I'll be there. And you keep showing up for a decade, which is not an, insin an insignificant amount of time. Um, I think about, I think about, uh, you know, my high school coaches, I, uh, I told you before we got going, I just got married a few weeks ago and we had just posted pictures on Facebook and had a high school coach, you know, congratulate me. And I shared a, a memory I had of him giving me advice about girlfriends, basically um, how there's more fish in the sea is kind of the story he was telling me in, in his own way. And just, it, it just, I remember exactly where we were and, and, you know, exactly what he said and, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting how like coaches stick like certain things that coaches say stick with you I don't know if you've had that personal experience so uh, being on the other side of the equation for you with the high school kids what changed your mind um, did you feel like you were just there to make them be better runners are you coaching them to be better people is it like what, what kind of environment was it? And, and was it a matter of just like you kind of still being an athlete and your coach said, do this. And you said, okay. <laughs> uh, D all the above. Yeah. <laughs> and so initially it was, I didn't, when I moved back after grad school, I didn't have a job. And so coach Watts was like, you know, yeah, you need to come out and help these, help me with these kids. And so at first it was just like, you know, I'd be, pacing girls running six minute pace or whatever whatever it was yeah running with a kid that's running 430 pace like pacing them for you know 400 meter reps or something like that and then when he left when he left Knoxville and and, and took the job at East Tennessee State University um the athletic director was like well you know do you just want the job and I'm like thinking like not really you know uh but the, like initially, I think early on, it was, I'm just going to try to make these, like this group of kids, like really good. You know, I, I don't really care about anything else. Um, but then over time, you know, you know, uh, and I, it, was, it was a public school. So it wasn't like I was like recruiting for, you know, private, you know, uh, high school in the area. And so, um, it just kind of, it, it just flowed into like, well, like now nah, I kind of care about these kids and, you know, 
you know, you get to, you know, meet mom and dad and brothers and sisters and, you know, you get to know, you know, their family a little bit more and, and then, you know, oh, he or she has some success and you're like, well, I can't leave now, you know, because now, you know, now I'm, now I'm, you know, they're committed. I'm, I have to be devoted. Um, and so it just kind of, it just snowballed from there. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously, you know, success, you know, you know, seeing kids run well and seeing, you know, mom and dad be happy. Um, even though I, I, I was steadfast, I remained grumpy the entire time. <laughs> Uh, just because that was that was the uh, mo that I chose to follow, and uh, just because someone and and I and I, I I I solely took on that role that like someone had to not celebrate every tiny little victory. Like you celebrate the victories with mom and dad. Like that's fine. You go you know and have your you know donut or cookie, whatever it is that you do to celebrate. I was still going to remain grumpy. Um, and I still probably do to this day, you know, coaching adults. And so, um, but it just, it, it yeah, it, it snowballed and like the team got a little bit better. Uh, and, you know, we had, you know, boys and girls running really well. And, um, and then, you know, different circumstances happen. And, um, and I, you know, I made the tough decision to, you know, to, to move on from it. And, but in the similar, in a similar sense, Jesse, like when I moved on from like my own, um, you know, running career, even though I, you know, continue to run to this day, like I, I made the, you know, it was a difficult decision and I moved on from it and, and I'm at peace with it. And I, and I, and I, I would hope that, uh, which some of the, athletes that I coached in high school, like I, I still keep in touch with them, you know, on occasion, like most of them now are, you know, going on to do bigger and better things than I've ever done. Like, you know, PhDs and master's degrees and different things like that. Some of them still run in, 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 in college. And um, so I'd like to think that, you know, we did a good job of not just focusing on the running, like that was really important, you know, um, but at the same time, like, you know, I'd like to think that they became like better people, uh, and based on the things that, you know, I know and see it, I think mission accomplished. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. Finger, fingers crossed. Right. You, you say, you know, the way you talk about it is just like, um, one of my high school coaches who I believe is still there, um, here 15 years later, and he's been. He's been threatening, and by th threatening, I mean I, I think largely to himself to leave pretty much every year. He's like, all right, I just got I got to get these kids through, and then I'm done. And then another one comes along. Okay, I just got to get these kids through, and then I'm done. <laughs> and he just keeps finding himself where he's like, like, like you said, they're committed, so he's committed, and he is definitely like. Um, so the high school I went to was. Uh, it's really like mixed economically where you've got people doing pretty well and people on the complete other end of the spectrum who are, you know, below the poverty line. And mm -hmm. he's happy to take anybody that wants to work, doesn't, doesn't care. And his motivation is largely like preparing kids for life. Cause just, just where they are, you know, you typically see more affluent areas and those high schools do better, you know, athletically often, at least that's the way it is around here, I guess. Not always. Yeah. You, you definitely get some standouts uh, from schools that don't have as affluent an area to pull from, but it seems like that's often the case. And he just, he finds himself so, committed and, and does so much for these kids that I wonder if he'll ever quit or if he'll, <laughs> if he'll drop dead first. He'll be um, one of those deals. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just, you know, I hope that he is cemented. There's a one particular coach 
uh, in the area who actually uh, passed away in the last few years. I can't remember whether he had cancer or what happened, but he's, you know, there's a, a race with his name on the course and he is cemented as, you know, one of the kind of legendary local coaches. I hope my coach is, is that way eventually. Um, but thinking about, you know, how you get kids out, who comes out. Uh, I think I read something about, I don't know if it was on, on the, uh, Knoxville Distant Project website or, or article or, or where it was when I was getting ready to talk to you, thinking about um, how people think running isn't cool and that, you know they don't want to run and it's kind of like these things that you just you just don't do like it's it's stupid. <laughs> you the the kids that came out, um, did you get them? Did you convince them to come out? Did you have other? Did you have like teachers in the school be like no like go run for coach Patrick. Did, did, did you have people coming in? Did you have to convince them? Did they show up ready to go? Did, did you develop that? Like, you know, what kind of personalities did you have show up, I guess? Well, so I'm, I'm a terrible salesperson. And so, no, I couldn't, I can't sell running to anybody. Yeah. I couldn't sell it to the doorknob. And so, um, and, and I think because of, like I said, my grumpy nature, I don't think there were any teachers in the building and I was in the building at the time uh, that would have said, Oh, you need to go run for Patrick, you know, uh, <laughs> because they're, they're really good or he's a great coach. It was like, you need to go play football, you know? And so, and I, and I used that accent on purpose because that's probably how it went down. Um, no, like, um, I don't know how, you know, kids got steered, and the school that I was in, Jesse, is probably, it's similar to where you went. Like it was the affluent part of town and then the not so affluent part of town. So it was a really uh, unique mixture. Um, and our team was like super small. Like if I didn't, you know, I didn't have, you know, a hundred kids to pull from. Yeah. I had like nine to pull from. Yeah. We were so, like, like the, 15 the, on the, a good year. <laughs> I, I I would have loved 15. And so I mean, boys and girls, you know, I don't know. Are you talking boys and girls? Oh, oh, well, yeah, we would have like not like 18 total. Yeah. Yeah. So, so somewhere between like 15 and 20 total. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and one or two guys go down one or, you know, one kid doesn't, isn't committed. Then the whole thing goes to hell in a bucket. And so, um, so I, you know, I, I didn't do a very good job of like bringing kids into the mix. It's like, if, if, a, if, a, if a kid came to me and said, Hey, I want to run and be like, okay, well, this is what you got to do. And then I'd lay it out for them. Like, this is the plan, you know, and not that everybody had like, you know, the same pre-plan, you know, uh, schedule, but it's like, well, this is the, this is the basis of it. Yeah. That sounds like a whole lot of work. Well then, then I would, then I'm very honest and blunt, like, then it's probably not going to work out for you. So I would, if I were you, I wouldn't waste your time. And while I might not value my time to the nth degree, I don't waste my time. Like go home after school and do whatever it is that you want to do as long as you're not at practice. Because I didn't want kids at practice that took down anybody else that wanted to be there. And so, yeah. um, you know, during that time that I spent at West High School, like, you know, we had a, a good group of kids. And so, um, but I don't, you know, I, I don't, I think I don't take any credit for it. I think the kids just kind of found their way. Like they weren't going to play soccer. You know, the, the boys weren't going to play football, um, you know, and they just kind of found their way to running you know, and thankfully it worked out. And so, uh, you know, would I want, I mean, I would have liked to coach 30 kids. If I coached 10 kids really well, I would have liked 30 or 40 of them. Um, but, you know, for the, you know, 10 to 15 kids that I did coach really well, or that ended up running really well, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, that was nice, but hopefully, you know, it meant something 
to them because honest in 20 years i'll probably forget about it you know unless i look back at the training log and find yeah. out like you know like what did what did what did this person do on that day and so um but yeah you know it's i think every coach would like to have like 100 kids you know what the old saying is like you know you, you got a you know an egg carton you know throw the eggs up and like hopefully it works out and yeah. i used to when i when i first started coaching high school kids which it was and i and i would say it to myself and this might be the first time i say it to anybody else like i had a pretty good high school coach like i didn't i wasn't really all that great in high school you know i think uh, you know i was like everybody else i ran like 9 30 and 4 30 and like those are like the very basic times that everybody's run you know i qualified for like one indoor national meet which is probably the most obscure meet that you could have qualified could qualify for um and i used to think like i want to be um the the high school coach for the students student athletes that i coached that i didn't have and then like as i as i went through the process a little bit more i was like well you know what shit like he might like i might not have run nine minutes and 410 but like he got me to this point and I've only had two coaches in my entire life. Like I might've ventured off a little bit, you know, outside of like working with coach Watts, but, um, for the most part, um, I've had two coaches. I had a high school coach, I had a college coach and I had a, you know, professional coach. And so when like towards the end of my time at West high school, I was like, you know, he probably, you know, coach Pazler did a pretty good job, you know, um, but that's what I used to say early on. Like, I want to be a better coach for these kids than I had. And I mean, I was on a pretty good team in high school and, you know, we were ranked in our state, which didn't, you know, doesn't mean much now. Um, and it, it didn't really mean much then either because we didn't win a state title, but, um, yeah. So it's kind of a long winded answer to your question. <laughs> no, that's all right. It, it's always interesting, like hearing other people's perspectives and, you know, you know, kind of your journey. I, I had so many coaches. Um, they, it seemed like they turned over, you know, I had the first three years of high school. Well, as I started running in eighth grade, so I had that coach and the new coach in high school head coach was the same for three years, but the assistants changed every single year. And then my senior year, new head coach, move on to college coach that changes over again. Head coach changes over again. My sophomore year get handed off to basically the assistant coach who was more experienced in distance running and then was with him through the rest and then kind of self coast post college. And finally now I've been with the coach I'm working with now for the longest duration of any coach. So how many, so how many years? Oh, so that period of years. Um, so that was, let's see one, that was basically five, what I would consider five or six head coaches in eight years. Ooh. Yeah, so that's bad. Yeah. So that's it was a lot like, of turnover. Yeah. So the consistency more had to be me than, than anything. I mean, yeah. in college we had, my sophomore year, it was basically me and my friend Grant, and we were the distance guys. Like, that was it. And we rebuilt the program from there, um, largely off the two of us getting faster and that having new guys be like, okay, I want to run with them and being, you know, kind of be used as recruiting tools. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so it was, I always felt like, I had this kind of nagging, like, could I have been better if I had more consistency? Cause since consistency is so important, you know, and just yeah. stayed under one coaching philosophy because it, every coach changes, they've got a different way to view it. They approach you differently. They have different workouts set up, like the whole thing. I'm not, I'm not too bummed by any, any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I, I, I did what I think I could do. And, uh, my last coach that I had for basically that, th that last three year stretch, um, I screwed myself up senior year, getting injured, trying to mess with my running form and improve it and not knowing what I was doing. But otherwise, um, 
you know, he, he really got the most out of me. Had I not messed myself up, we would have got a little bit more out. Probably gone like 15, 30 ish. Um, which when I started that college, been, yeah, that would have been fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah. And when I started college, I was only like just under 18. So I went from there to, you know, I, so I made a, a fair amount yeah. of improvement in that time. Um, but so that's anyway, so I was, I'm always curious, like, do other people get this more, you know, consistent treatment? Is the turnover high everywhere? Is it just cause I went to, you know, a small school well, for college yeah and uh anyway it's, it's just as a there's no question there's no big statement or philosophical thought it's just uh kind of reminiscing on uh, this journey i went through versus you know your experience and it's just interesting how that that treatment kind of turns out different athletes and sometimes for the better sometimes for the worse, depending on good coaches bad right. coaches and fit philosophy all that kind of stuff you know, I, I, I mean, I, I preach consistency. I did then and I, and I do now with the athletes that I coach and whether that consistency remains with me or some, some other coach, like is, uh, you know, I just think, you know, if you not, not that you want to bang your head against the wall, but if you consistently do something um, with, you know, pure intent and, and dedication and commitment, like we talked about, um, then you're bound to see results as long as you're not doing anything like, you know, uh, haphazardly. And so, um, I mean, and that was like the same thing I, you know, preached to, you know, working with high school athletes, like you can't come to practice like two days a week, um, you know, and, and expect to, to run well and perform well. And so, you know, um, yeah, musicians can't not like rehearse and then get on stage and think that they're going to have a great show. And so um, it, it, you know, wh or whomever, you know, a dancer, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, to perform a recital, you just can't do it. And so, um, you know, scientists perform, you know, experiments over and over and over again in order to, you know, get the result that they desire. And I think, you know, as coaches, like, you know, and as athletes, you know, and in turn athletes, you know, the, the, the coach, hell, sometimes I think, you know, the athlete, the, the coach coaches the athlete, but it's a cyclical thing because like, you know, the athlete perform, you know, performs the, the objectives that, that we give them and we get the feedback and, and then it just keeps, you know, going around in a circle. And then, so it's a, it's a continuous thing. Um, but if you, if you just looked at it and been like, okay, that's fine. Like we'd move on to the next thing, which like in some cases I like to do that. Like when, when they're, when the season is over and there's nothing else to look at, examine, then it's like, then I wash my hands clean of it. And it's like, okay, we go on to the next objective. Uh, but when you're in the, the, you know, the, the, the midst of it, um, you know, then like the athletes that I, you know, that had workouts today, I'll look at their training and see what the splits were. And like, you know, they'll teach me something that I, you know, that maybe I forgot or didn't really like, well, hell, like you ran a little bit quicker than I thought you were going to run or why didn't this workout go as well as we planned it to go. And, um, it, you know, it's just like a give and take, you know, back and forth. And, um, and like that aspect to it is, uh, you know, I don't know, that's fascinating, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Patrick, as we're starting to wind down on time, um, you've watched a number of episodes, so you, you know, my question already, unlike many people, um, but I'll ask you anyway, just to, for the listener, if you haven't listened to any other episodes, um, the question I'm asking every single person this year is how do you stay motivated after you failed to reach a goal? Oh man. Wow. That's, uh, how do I stay motivated? After? Well, um, I guess my, um, grumpy response to that would be, I don't really set goals for myself. <laughs> and so, 
Um, you can't fail if means, you don't set a mark. Yeah. So my, uh, you know, I, as far as like running, like running goals, I don't really have any running goals anymore. Like, um, I I would like to keep this quote streak up. I don't know for how long I'm going to keep it up. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, my body is willing and able to participate in this activity every day. Um, what I, you know, but that, that's me, that's, that's my, uh, perspective from it. So my only goal every day is to get like, open up the front door and start moving every day. And so I think when I talk with athletes, um, I try to, I, I, I like to think long-term. And so like tomorrow, you know, tomorrow could be a great day. Although like what I would think, what is the run today going to bring you like, you know, five, 10, 15 years from now. And so if you don't reach, you know, if they don't reach the goal that they had set for themselves, like in that moment, like, well, how can you um, grow and become not only a better runner, but become like, you know, obviously, you know, a better person, a better coworker, a better spouse, partner, whatever it might be. And so um, learning, learning from that experience. And so maybe, even though I might not like to admit it, like, you know, there's days when I'm probably like a really shitty running partner to my friends. And like, I probably complain too much some days and, you know, this hurts, that hurts hurts or I'm just in a bad mood um and then I get done with the run and I get a text from my buddy and it was like you know hey you okay and I'm like yeah I'm fine like what's the he's like oh you seem grumpy like well I'm all a I'm always grumpy and <laughs> and, and but but b like you know from again from my perspective like well how can I be a better like training partner tomorrow like what can I do um to make myself better tomorrow. And I think that's how, as an athlete, if I put myself back in like my, you know, my athletic days, like, well, if I didn't accomplish the goal that I wanted to this weekend, like, what do I need to do? Like, what what did it teach me? And so every, every moment I think as a coach or an athlete is a teaching moment. And so, uh, maybe having been you know in a in a past career a teacher like maybe that has something to do with it um but yeah I think you know learning from the experience and and being able to like pull from it and some of the some of the stuff you might want to just like leave it and then some of it like I'm going to take this with me but I'm going to you know I'm going to move on with with this experience and I'm going to leave that shit behind yeah. you know yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Patrick, if people want to get in touch with you, see what you're up to, if they're in town, maybe go for a run or be a part of your team, where, where can they find you, get in touch, all that kind of stuff? Well, they'd have to wake up pretty early. Yeah. So since I, since I hit the road at 5 a.m., uh, then I, I, you know, we run, I run with any and all paces, people, individuals, doesn't matter. Um, my email address is Knox K N O X distance project at gmail.com. Um, as long as they're not going to spam me and send me like, you know, invitations to, uh, things that I don't want invitations to, uh, they can find us on Instagram, uh, Facebook. Um, you know, I've, um, I'm easily accessible. I don't think I'm, uh, not accessible and so right. um and yeah um but yeah anybody that's willing and able to run at 5 a.m we can run seven minute six minute pace we can run 10 minute pace for all i care um as long as it it promotes like a good at like a good vibe and a good atmosphere then that that's you know i think that's the most important thing so that's good thanks for hanging out with me today patrick Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate it, man. This has been a great time.